Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gas Powered Bike Channel. If this is your first time, as always, welcome to the Gas Powered Bike Channel. Today I was just going to share a friendly little tip that makes greasing your wheel bearings 100% easier. But before we get into that, for those who are new or are just building their first bike, let me explain how the coaster brake works or at least a little bit of how it works so you have at least a general understanding of what's going on inside that hub. Okay, when you're riding down the street, being like I have the wheel chucked up here in the vise, I can't spin the wheel and hold the axle, so you're gonna have to bear with me just for the general operations. Okay, usually this is hooked to your frame That's what allows the brake shoes to open up when you pedal backwards. Um, you get a little understanding of that as I explain, hopefully. All right, so anyway, we're rolling down the street. Now we need to stop the bike. So this would usually be hooked to the frame. You'll pedal backwards. The harder you apply pressure to the rear, pedaling backwards, the quicker the bike stops. What is going on inside of your hub when you pedal this backwards it's on a corkscrew actuator which is basically just a giant screw and the brake shoes are two half moons of steel and when you pedal backwards it rides up the threads and opens up and puts pressure on the hub your hub is actually your brake drum if you will so you're riding down the street normal time to stop you pedal backward the shoes open up and there you have it and then you pedal back forward that brings the shoes back together they release from the hub and you're back riding so just for a quick little demo when i apply the brake as you see me pedal it backwards the shoes have opened up in there and now i can't move the axle but when i pedal forward now I'm back to free spinning and riding down the road. That's just the general operation of the coaster brake. What we're gonna to discuss today, when you're building a new bike, you can't count on the factory giving you an adequate amount of grease on your wheel bearings. So when you turn it into a motorized bike, the wheel bearings are gonna be working a little harder. So it's important that we have an adequate amount of lubrication on the wheel bearings so they don't prematurely wear out and you're always having to buy wheels, be it front or rear. So it's always a great practice to keep your wheel bearings lubed. You don't have to do it once a month or anything like that. But when you're building one new, it is a 100% good idea to check and make sure they are adequately lubed so you don't have any problems. Hopefully that gave you a least common knowledge explanation of how your rear coaster brakes work. I know it wasn't the most scientific thing you're going to hear in your life, but hopefully it got the job done. So anyway, moving on, we're going to remove our brake arm. Set that to the side. We're gonna remove our bearing cap slash dust cover to expose our bearing. We're gonna use our brake arm now to loosen our bearings and race. Now in the beginning, when I used to do these, I would take the time and remove all of the internal parts, lube the bearings, and reassemble it. That takes a massive amount of time. If you've never done it, sometimes it turns into a massive project. Others have done it, and if you do do that, and you can't get it reassembled, because it is a little technical inside there, you can take your wheel to your local bike shop generally, and for a few dollars, they'll 
lube and put all your internal parts back in so they work. Because it is a pain. Because there's a little... I don't know the technical term for it right off the top of my head, but there is a little shim that holds the brake shoes. So you have to get your actuator cog here lined up with your shoes on it, then get that piece in there that holds the shoes. Because if it wasn't in there, when you apply the brake, all the parts would just spin and the bike would keep going. That's why the brake arm is affixed to the frame here because it holds the axle which holds that shim, if you will, that holds the brake shoes in place. So when you operate them, they once again open up. If that wasn't in there, when you apply the brakes, everything would just spin and the bike wouldn't stop. But anyway, this video is not about that, but I just wanted to put that in there so someone didn't just freely spin this bearing race out. All those parts come apart inside. Now you've got that problem. So anyway, I got tired of doing that myself because it's just time consuming, adds extra work, and sometimes you have a bad day and it's just a pain in the butt to get them back together. So then I moved to the loosen them slightly, just so I had a little play, as you see, and I could expose my bearing well enough to lubricate it. As you can see, as it comes from the factory, there is a film of grease on it, but you're going to want a little more grease on it. As I said before, you're motorizing your bike up, so it's going to spin a lot faster, so you want a little more grease coverage. So, I came up with the plan. It works adequately. It takes a little time, but it does work adequately. I would take a little miniature flat blade screwdriver and begin to pack it in there. And just keep putting grease on my screwdriver and just keep packing it and that would adequately lubricate the wheel bearings. But every once in a while, to get more clearance on the other side, I too would give it one extra turn, and it only takes that one extra turn after you get so far to let those parts come apart, and now you gotta take it all apart and realign everything. That was a super pain in the butt. So, I thought to myself, why not use the grease gun and my needle, the grease needle. You can pick these up, generally at your local hardware store or your parts auto parts store, has them in the lubrication section. We use them for different stuff around the shop here, but they work perfect for lubricating your bike bearings. And you only have to spread things apart, loosen them, if you will, enough to get that fine needle in there. And it saves you and me a world of problems. And as you can see, it gets the bearing race packed. The grease goes in between the ball bearings and its cage. Let me turn that a little bit, maybe so you can see a little better. Makes the job simpler. Gives you an adequate amount of lubrication. And when you tighten it back up, bearings are 100 percent lubricated and then we'll spin it around and do the same thing on the bearings and race and the cages on the inner bearing of the sprocket cog if you will and then there's an outer bearing and we will do the same thing and then we will replace our dust cap Replace our brake lever arm. And 
and we're good to go. We can reassemble it on our bike after we install our sprocket and uh, get thousands more miles out of it because they're well lubricated. I just never trust the stores unless you buy your bike directly from a bike shop. The factories, as you've seen, just give you a thin coat of oil on it, which is adequate for just pedaling around the neighborhood. But when you're going to motorize it and it's going to spin a lot faster, it's going to need more lubrication to keep that dude alive. If not, you'll be spending $50 to $70 every so often on a new wheel because the bearings will have ran dry, eaten themselves up, possibly eaten up your hub. And the only way to fix that is to buy a new wheel. It costs too much just to have them respoke it and put a new hub in it. The easiest and best way to do it after you went that far and got that much damage is just to put a new wheel on it. Hopefully this time you'll lubricate it up or have it lubricated up properly and you're back to riding. Okay. I hope this saves somebody some pain and anguish on their coaster brake lubricating. Because like I said, those parts fall apart inside. It's just a big pain in the butt to have to stop and fool with that and get it all back together and or take it to the bike shop. Now we've lost valuable daylight time of building our bike and uh, just an unnecessary pain in the butt. All right, I'm gonna finish lubricating this wheel, reassemble it, get my sprocket on there, do the machine work to the center of the sprocket because that's what we do so we can keep that dust cap. You always wanna keep your dust cap on there Keeps all the road grime, dirt, salt in the winter. If you have to ride in the winter or you do ride in the winter. And uh, debris out of there and gives you a lot longer time on your wheel.